Next on WBBM, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. 47 degrees at 8 o'clock. WBBM, Chicago. WBBM FM, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Philip Martin, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Martin. Got a job for you. Well, fine. We insure a Mr. Alfred Chambers of Pittsburgh. He was shot to death yesterday. Murder? That's the way it looks. He'd rented a cabin in Michigan, Lachino Islands. Where's that? Oh, about 30 miles from Sault Ste. Marie. Right up near Canada. Yeah, that's right. His wife found him lying in the front room of the cabin, shot through the chest. The officer handling the case is Captain George Lane, Sault Ste. Marie Police. He'll be expecting you. I'll leave in the morning. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum present these weekly adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. That's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People find that chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow makes time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy... That good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alfred Chambers matter. Expense account item one, $45.95, plane fare and incidentals between Hartford, Connecticut and Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Expense account item two, 75 cents, cab fare to the local police station where I introduce myself to Captain George Lane. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Mr. Martin from your company called told me to expect you. How can I help? Well, to begin with, you can fill me in on the details. Mm, sure. You ever been to the Snows? The Snows? They should know islands. Oh, no, no. Well, there are a whole group of islands on the fringe of Lake Huron. Lake Chino means the channels. It's somewhat of a resort now, but very exclusive. People who go to the snows have been coming up for years. They own homes on various islands and altogether a very respectable community. Alfred Chambers rented the Forester Cabin. It's one of the islands furthermost from the mainland, about uh, two miles, I'd say. He spent three days in the snows and then his wife arrived from Pittsburgh. Mr. Schoenberg, fellow, has a boat rental service, took her out to the island, and she found her husband lying in the living room dead, shot through the chest. Any suspects? Not a one. Mrs. Chambers told me she'd separated from her husband about a week before he'd come to the snows, but she couldn't have killed him. Schoenberg was with her all the time. And according to the coroner, Chambers had been dead for about 14 hours. Until the investigation's cleared up, I've been making my headquarters at the hotel at the snows. I just came in to get the coroner's report. I was going back this afternoon, if you'd care to come along. Yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> Any other homes on the island? Yeah, several. One about a half mile south, one on the other side of the island. This is where Mrs. Chambers found her husband. Mm-hmm. Lying on his face. The front door was open. He wasn't shot inside the cabin. He wasn't? If you didn't notice when we came in, there was some blood leading up the front steps. See? You can see where it trails in here. Staggered in from outside, Yeah. Huh? No electricity in the house. No, Coleman lamps. The uh, other two homes on the island have electricity, phones. 
But this place is nearly 60 years old. The owners never bothered to equip it with any modern conveniences. How did Chambers get to and from the mainland? Boat. Rented a boat from Schoenberg. When the coroner examined him, he noticed that his shoes were still damp. Later examination showed he'd been in the water fully clothed. That's funny. I think he was shot probably while he was out on the dock. Fell in the water and waded to shore. You say he'd been dead about 14 hours. That's right. Uh, make it about five in the evening when he was shot. Hmm. What time does it get dark? Oh, up here this time of year, it doesn't get dark till about nine o'clock. Twilight. Hmm. Shot in the chest. Mm-hmm. You recover the slug? Yeah, twenty-two, long rifle. Well, he was shot when it was light, and you think he was out there in the dock. I'm pretty sure he was out there. There was a thick mud on his shoes and on the pants. Now, that mud is on the bottom out there by the dock. In close here, it's more sand. And then to get completely wet like that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem likely that anyone could have shot him from the lake. No, they'd have to be out in a boat. That'd be taking a pretty big chance. And somebody on the island. Somewhere in the woods back there, huh? Probably. Someone could have landed on the island any place and walked here. Anyone here a shot? Yeah, I've talked with a lot of people. Some of them remember hearing a shot about that time. There's no telling where it came from. Shot on this lake you can hear from miles. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd like to have a talk with Mrs. Chambers. Oh, sure. Schoenberg can take us back to the mainland. You can drive my car over to the hotel. Come in, Mr. Dollar. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Mrs. No, Chambers. not at all. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks. Oh, it's a beautiful view. Yes, isn't it? Is this your first time up here? Yes, it is. Mine, too. Um, you're an insurance investigator. Yes. My company covers both you and your husband. Well, Mr. Dollar, just how can I help you? Answer some questions. I know it's tough at this time. Oh, well, I'll be glad to tell you anything I can. Captain Lane said that you and Mr. Chambers had separated. Yes, that's correct. May I ask why? Is it absolutely necessary? Your husband's been killed, Mrs. Chambers. Your separation might mean nothing, and then again... No, it was another woman. Do you mind telling me about it? It isn't the most pleasant subject, but I suppose you have to know. About a month ago, Al admitted that he'd been seeing this woman. He said it was serious. We argued. It was a rather nasty argument. We considered separation then, but... Because of the publicity, we held off. Your husband was in the steel business, wasn't he? Yes. And we have two children. Well, things like this happen all the time, I guess. And I can understand. I saw the girl one night. She was very attractive. Quite young. I think Al told me she was in her last year in college. What's her name? Oh, I don't think it was her fault. She's young, and my husband was certainly a very attractive man. I don't think it was either of their faults, really. Things like that happen. It would be a shame to involve her now. She's already involved. This looks like murder. Anyone connected with your husband is involved. What's her name? Jane Elkins. I've never met her, but my husband told me she's a lovely girl. From a fine family. A week ago, I wouldn't have cared whether or not she was involved in the scandal, but now... Oh, certainly I've suffered enough, and it'll be a terrible thing for my children. I thought a lot about the girl after I found Al. I hoped that perhaps she might be spared. She lives in Pittsburgh? Yes. Your husband left Pittsburgh when? A week ago today. He decided to take his vacation alone, think things over. Why did you come up here? I thought things over, too, Mr. Dollar. I decided to give Al his freedom. I talked with our lawyer, and he suggested I have one more talk with Al. I left the next morning. Did you tell your husband you were coming up? No. There was no way of reaching him. There's no phone on the island. The letter would have gotten here after I did. So you just packed and came up, huh? Yes. I only packed one bag. I wasn't planning on staying. When did you leave Pittsburgh? The morning of the 18th. You arrived the next morning? 
Oh, I arrived at the Sioux that night. I came to the Snows the next morning. You've never been here before? No. How did you know how to find the cabin where your husband was staying? Well, I simply asked the man who runs the boats. I asked him to take me to the Forester's cabin. I see. Can you think of anyone who might want to kill your husband? A week ago, I thought about it. Anyone else? No. My husband was well-liked, Mr. Dollar. He was a very respected man. No business troubles? Oh, no. How long has it been since your husband was up here? Oh, well, let's see. He always used to talk about it. He used to tell the children he'd show them pictures. Oh, I guess it's about ten years ago. Yes, I think it was about that long before we were married. Well, Mrs. Chambers? Oh, must you go? I have to get back to Captain Lane. I've got his car. The captain asked me to stay until he finishes his investigation. Yes. Uh... I don't know anyone here. I was hoping you might have dinner with me. It's very good food, a pleasant dining room. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Chambers, but I... Excuse me. Yes? Yes. By all means, come right up. Well, I'll be going, Mrs. Chambers. I think you should stay, Mr. Dollar. Hmm? That phone call was from the lobby. It was Miss Jane Elkins. Friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time. Even when you're busy working, you can slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint in your mouth and enjoy the pleasant chewing. The lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The good, smooth chewing helps relieve pent-up tension, gives you satisfaction. As a result, you seem to feel more relaxed and get more enjoyment out of what you're doing. So enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum while you work, and at other times, too. Get a few packages next time you're at the store. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Jane Elkins, the woman who had caused the separation between Mrs. Chambers and her husband, had called from the hotel lobby. Jane Elkins, the Pittsburgh college student, had suddenly turned up at Les Chenot's. Mrs. Chambers? Yes. Come in. We've never met, but I... My husband told me about you. This is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? Hello, Miss Elkins. I- I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. That's quite all right. When you called, I asked Mr. Dollar to stay. He's investigating my husband's death. Oh? Sit down, Miss Elkins. Please. Thank you. I must say, your call certainly surprised me. When I heard you were in town, I thought about calling you sooner, but... Well, I, I understand. You were in town when Mrs. Chambers arrived, Miss Elkins? Oh, yes. I came up with some friends. They have a home on one of the islands. Mrs. Chambers, I didn't know Al... Mr. Chambers was coming up here. You didn't? Mrs. Chambers, I wasn't in love with your husband. I never have been. I must admit that for a while I I thought perhaps I was. You didn't know Mr. Chambers was coming up here? I had no idea until he arrived. How long had you been here before Mr. Chambers arrived? Nearly a week. You told him you were coming up? Yes. I I told him I wasn't sure about... I I said I wanted to come up and think for a while. Where were you when Mr. Chambers was killed? I don't know. I I don't know just when he was killed. I I heard about it. Um, Let's see, on Wednesday in the afternoon. When was the last time you saw him? 
I saw him Tuesday afternoon. That was the last time. He came into Cedarville. I met him at the drugstore. We talked, and he went back to the island. Had you seen him much before that? While you were up here, I mean? Yes, I saw him twice. Shortly after he arrived, and one time after that at the post office. Mrs. Chambers, when he arrived and we met, I told him I'd rather not see him while I was up here. The people I'm staying with know Mr. Chambers. They're from Pittsburgh also. Do I know them? The weather waxes? Oh, yes. You see, before I met your husband, I was engaged to their son, Charles. Is he here in the snows? Yes, we all drove up together. Does he know about you and Mr. Chambers? Yes. Did he know that Mr. Chambers was here in town? Yes, I told him. How did he take it? Not too well, I'm afraid. Miss Elkins, before my husband arrived, had you come to any decision? Yes. Maybe you won't believe it, but it's true. When your husband arrived, I told him... I said I thought it would be best if we forgot the whole thing. I wasn't in love with him, Mrs. Chambers. Not really. Miss Elkins, after Mr. Chambers left you that last time in the afternoon, what did you do? I went back to the house. Where was Charles? Was he at the house? No, I, I don't think so. No, he was out. Well, Mr. Dollar, you weren't suggesting... Just a simple question. Where was Charles? He was out in the boat. Alone? Was he alone? I don't know. Well, it's easy to find out. Mr. Dollar, if you'll excuse me, I really must be going. Oh, that's too bad. W will you forgive me if I run now, Mrs. Chambers? Charles' parents are giving a cocktail party this afternoon in, in my honor. I'm in anything but a party mood, but there was no way I could get out of it. Well, that is, with, without telling the weather waxers about... Uh, yes, I understand. You run along. Thank you for coming to see me. Oh, Mrs. Chambers, if I could only tell you how sorry I am about everything. I know. Goodbye, my dear. After Jane Elkins left, I talked with Mrs. Chambers for a few minutes more, then made my excuses and drove to the Cedarville Hotel and registered there. I reported my findings to Captain Lane, who said he'd check on Jane Elkins and her boyfriend. Then I stretched out on the bed and tried to figure my next move. Well, it didn't take long to figure. I decided to crash the Weather Waxes cocktail party. Expense account item three. One dollar and a half. Boat rental and Schoenberg services as pilot. We made it in 15 minutes. Schoenberg pulled into a long dock where a veritable armada of small craft were tied up. The party was well underway. The guests were milling around on a long strip of white beach about 50 yards below a huge Georgian house. No one asked to see my invitation, so I grabbed a drink from a passing tray and looked around for Jane Elkins. I spotted her a few yards away talking to a stout, mustached party with a rich bourbon complexion. I stepped briskly up to her side. Uh, Jane Elkins, I presume? What? Oh. Uh, Jane, I wonder if I could have a word with you. Uh, old man, you won't mind if I steal the guest of honor from you, would you? Mind? I certainly do mind. I wouldn't think... Say, don't I know you? Aren't you Robinson Plumbing Supply? Uh, no, I'm Dollar. Insurance. Oh, insurance? Oh, well, uh, excuse me. I'll see you later, Jane. That always empties the hall in a hurry. What are you doing here? I've got a lot of questions that need answers. I don't want to make a scene, but if you don't leave this instant, I'll have you thrown out. You might as well talk to me as to the police. I'm a lot more sympathetic. The police? Yeah, the police. Now just give me some answers and I'll be on my way. What, what do you want to know? Well, that's better. What time did your fiancé come back here yesterday? I'm not sure. I think it was around 6.30. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, could you point him out to me? He's standing over there by the bar, the, the man in the green jacket. Well, he's a big one, isn't he? Now, Miss Elkins, what time did you return here yesterday? About four o'clock. Four o'clock. You stayed here the rest of the afternoon? Yes. Where were you? Where? Were you in the house? You surely can't think that Take I... it easy. Charles is heading this way. Please, please go. Oh, not yet. Charles is the man I'd like most to meet. 
You two seem to be having a fascinating conversation. Mind if I butt in? Oh, butt away, Mr. Weatherwax. Uh, my name is Dollar. How do you do, Mr. Dollar? Fine, thank you. Uh, if you're through with my hand now, I'd like it back. How's that, Mr. Dollar? I might want to use it again sometime. Oh, sorry. Well, here, you can have it back. Thanks. Now, let me give you a tip. Next time you try that bone-crushing bit, watch out for a left hook. (laughs) Jane, just who is this little friend of yours? He's not a friend. Oh, no, not a friend. Something much more than that. Much closer. Much warmer. Get out of here, Dollar. Or so help me, I'll break you in two. I'll scatter you all over the beach. All right, all right, Mr. Weatherwax. I'll go. You told me what I wanted to know. You're a jealous man and a violent man. The perfect type. What are you talking about? Charles, he's a detective. He's investigating Alfred's death. Oh, why didn't you say so, Dollar? I'm not answering today. I'm asking. For instance, where were you yesterday afternoon? And do you own a twenty-two rifle? Chambers was killed with a twenty-two. The slug can be traced to the rifle it was fired from. They call it ballistics. Isn't science wonderful? Goodbye, Charles. Schoenberg and I took off from LaSalle Island, but instead of heading for center Cedarville, we turned into an inlet about a half mile down the lake where we could still see the weatherwax dock. We waited there for ten minutes. Then Charles Weatherwax appeared on the landing. He climbed into a small cruiser and headed south. He cruised to a spot about 300 yards off the shore of Baxter's Island, hove to, stripped down to bathing trunks, put on a pair of underwater goggles, and dived in. He came up seconds later and then submerged once more. I told Schoenberg to pull up to him at top speed. When Charles surfaced again, he saw us bearing down on him and climbed hastily back into the boat. But before he could weigh anchor, we were alongside. Don't leave just yet, Charles. This is a gun in my hand. Yeah, I see it. Spear fishing without a spear, huh? What kind of fish are you after, Charles? All right. Start it up and head for the landing. And don't get reckless, Charles. I'm a fair shot. Charles, all ashore that's going ashore. We regret this, Dollar. All right. Let's go up toward the house. We can talk better there. Come on, move, Charles. Move. This is far enough. All right, talk, Charles. What were you looking for out there in the sky blue water? I don't have to tell you anything. If you'd rather talk to Captain Lane, it's all right with me. But why not tell me? It'll look a little better on the record. I didn't kill Chambers, but I was with him when he was killed. Go on. I came over to tell him to stay away from Jane. But Jane said that she'd broken with him that same afternoon. Yeah, but I didn't know that then. We were standing out on the dock, he and I, talking. There was a shot, and he fell in the water. And you just left him there? But he was dead. I'm afraid not. He made it to the cabin. Oh, I thought he was dead. I got panicky. I realized how bad it looked. Ran to my boat and took off. Then I remembered I had a twenty-two rifle in the cabin. I threw it overboard. Then today you made the crack about ballistics. It came to me what I'd done. I'd thrown away the one piece of evidence that would clear me. So I came back to find it. Well, it's a good story. But I don't buy it. I think you're... <laughs> A big man, he was very fast. He dived at me suddenly in a flying tackle, and I went over backward. I managed to kick loose from his grip, but the gun had been jolted out of my hand. He scooped it up and pointed it at my head. I jumped at him. He went over backward. I went over with him, grabbed the gun from his hand, and then stood up. Much the worse for wear. You're pretty fast, Dollar. Tell me something. Why didn't you fire? You had plenty of time. Why not? Maybe you're just not the shooting type. Maybe that tall story you told was true. It is true. Well, maybe I believe you. The only trouble is, if you didn't kill him, there's a good chance that Jane did. Are you crazy? I don't think so. 
Besides you, she's the only person I know of who had both motive and opportunity and no alibi. Oh, you're raving mad. What motive would she have to kill him? She says she told Chambers Tuesday that it was all over between them. She did. She says she did. But suppose it was the other way around. Suppose he jilted her. Ever hear the line about a woman scorned? All right. All right, I killed him. I didn't know that Jane had broken up with him. He got nasty and I shot him. I see. Where were you when you shot him? I was... St- what difference does that make? I tell you, I killed him. Take me into the mainland, I'll make a full confession. Okay, if you say so. I say... Hey, that was a rifle shot. Came from over there beyond those trees. Yeah. Come on, let's go, halfback. You first. We ran through the grove of fir trees and came to a little cove not more than 200 yards off. A rowboat was pulled up on the beach, and beside it was a small boy with a twenty-two rifle. Hi. What's your name? Jimmy Bishop. What's yours? You live over on Fire Island, don't you? Yeah. What were you shooting at just now? Squirrels. Oh, they're all right to shoot. My father says they're pests. You come here often to shoot? Once in a while. Were you here Tuesday afternoon around 5 o'clock? Yeah, sure. I got two squirrels. I'm afraid that wasn't all you got, Sonny. Well, that's the way things work out sometimes. You think you've got a cold-blooded murder on your hands, and it turns out to be a young kid who shouldn't have been given a gun on his birthday. The 22 was checked by the ballistics department and proved to be the one that had fired the fatal shot. At the inquest, the jury returned a verdict of accidental manslaughter. However, it's doubtful if young Jimmy Bishop will ever want another gun as long as he lives. Expense account item four, $22 for hotel bill and transportation back to the Sioux Airport. Expense account item five, $43.85, plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $114.05. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time. Chew a few sticks of Wrigley's Spearmint during the day and see how the good chewing helps you keep feeling fresh and alert. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum cools your mouth, freshens your taste, and sweetens your breath. The chewing itself gives you a nice little boost, helps you keep going at your best. Millions of people get real chewing enjoyment out of Wrigley Spearmint Gum every day. And we know that you'll enjoy it, too. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Hal March, Marvin Miller, Jeanette Nolan, Jane Webb, and Dick Beals. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. 
You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.